Hello, Lee. Hey, man. How are you? I'm very good. Bit lo bit logied up. Sorry if I'm feeling a bit thingy. Uh, no hugs and kisses today. Okay. I'm afraid. No tongues. No tongues. <laughs> um, so, good couple of weeks. Not too bad. We, we uh, we've had Black Friday at mm -hmm. Anderson's, which was pretty crazy mental. Um, but um, yeah, done pretty much everything that we talked about scales wise last time. Um, so I've started to. I bought myself some. I know I did. I did download some some paper off of your uh -huh. website, but I thought you know what, I'm just going to buy a book. Otherwise, I'm going to lose uh -huh. all the bits of paper. So I've written some licks out in in A. And cool. re realised again, actually, that actually I don't know that many licks, and I just play the same one over and over and over again. But I've done about ten licks okay. there. Great. Uh, been practicing the second position hammer major scale oh, yeah. with hammer-ons, realising that the hammer-ons are not the problem, but the pull-offs are way more mm -hmm. difficult. Everyone finds that. Um, particularly way more difficult to do if I try and pick the first note. Almost, almost easier to just. Wow, it's interesting. Okay, we'll talk about that in a second. So that was that one. Yeah. What else did we do? Uh, uh, pro scale, some scale, uh, the scale work, notes on the neck. Notes on the neck, yeah. Kind of doing that using the app, just generally okay. being more aware of, uh, uh, just just trying to okay. be more aware it's, of what's just I ah, knew yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. What's that note? That is a, um, a D. Excellent. Sorry, that I'm one. That is a um, F sharp. Excellent. That one. That is uh, an A. Excellent. That one. That is a C. Dude, this is awesome. That one. Is an E. That is a um, B flat. Dude, this is fantastic. <laughs> that is a... Oh man, now you've thrown me. You've given me too much encouragement. That is a, an F. Dude, that is outstanding. Sorry. You're doing really well. Yeah, no, it's... It, I mean, when we met the very first time, yes. you didn't know... And I, like, I was pointing at a note and you were like... I'm not even sure if I can yeah. work that out. Now there's there's hardly any hesitation. You're like, oh, th 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 yeah. that's that. Because funnily enough, the 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 bit that I did take away combination of doing the theory lessons on your website or some of the theory lessons on your website and last it was, I'm what I realised is I do know I did know like maybe a third of the notes instantaneously, the the sort of the root of the chord notes. Yeah, yeah. But what I'd never really done was work out well if something's like one note below that or two notes below that or whatever what is Good. what is it so now uh -huh. now i'm just much quick in fairness all those notes that that hesitation of the one second is really just going what's the closest note that i do know without any hesitation Good. and then going well what's is that related to that thing that we talked about last time about having the fed and the b to be and not to be and uh, little, no i don't you didn't find keywords you just looked for the ones you knew yeah i didn't find any of the um um, what do you call the sort of acronyms if you yeah, like yeah. You know, I, yeah. I, 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 I think to be honest with you I'm, I'm sort of beyond mm -hmm. having to lose uh, not beyond having to do it but al almost of an age even where mm -hmm. it's just like just didn't it didn't really relate to me I mean I, I, I even now that the, the open strings is the only acronym and even that uh -huh. I just in my head I go Iadgaba I don't I don't even come up yeah, with a yeah. okay but and but I, it's because I think you know absolutely you know I know you know G A C D you know so you sit there going you know B you they, they, I know enough of those notes without any hesitation to be able to go that and then the, the only other thing is I'm then going well that's the octave so yep. therefore but it's right it's definitely Dude, that's better. it the the. I want you to stick with it, just mm. because eventually I do want you to, yeah. to be relatively instant. Yeah. And uh, and a well, little conversation we had just before we turned the camera on was about music theory and mm. some potential, like, why the hell are you making me do this? And yeah. some of that relates back to this. Yeah. So sometimes music theory, like learning the notes, uh, is difficult when you've owned, or, or it's difficult to make a sense of how it works when you've only previously looked at shapes. Yeah. So when you don't know about what the notes are or what the notes are in a given scale or a key or a chord or whatever, it's you, you only have shapes. You have yeah. this, here's a visual pattern of a scale that I know works and those notes work well. And if you do it long enough, you'll develop a relationship mm -hmm. between the sound of where you put your fingers and what it actually really sounds like. So you can kind of, 
either hear it in your head and then come make it come out, which is always something that's difficult to describe. But I think you uh, you have an idea of what it's going to sound like before mm-hmm. you put your finger down. Now. Once you develop an, a sound understanding of the notes on the neck and where they are, the idea of knowing that the third of an A major scale is a C sharp becomes a little bit more useful. Now, some examples of where that might uh, come into play is mostly where we start making changes. Now, you're almost on the verge of making changes. We're not mm. quite there yet. It's probably that'll be our main target next year. I think will be mm. as a good thing. But to, to give you an idea of it now, let's say uh, the third of the scale of A major is C sharp, right? right. What's the, the third note in the scale of D major? Can you tell me? Not without physically think, going. Think about okay without doing it on the guitar. All right. Uh, you just did it on the guitar. Well, so yeah. So it now. It, it's. But I wouldn't know it. I, I couldn't tell you that without going but again this is where this is where we go back to the shapes thing okay in i suppose it, perhaps people have just and i had a chat before the camera started rolling of uh, and I, I think this is going to turn into some sort of psychotherapy lesson here because you my, my entire life from school and onwards has been the minute that i can't see the application for what someone's mm-hmm. teaching me i um I I really just have a some sort of mental. No, but block. this is what I said to you last um, week: was that if you don't understand why mm, I'm asking you to do something, yeah. you have to ask yeah. me. It's really no, like, and, and, it's, I, and I was I nearly picked up the phone about three times between right. the last lesson and now, sort of going because I, I'm. If that happens again, do it. It's no, fine. I w- okay, because yeah. I, I I'm I could I could really feel this weird sensation of almost. Very various points through through my education at school and my work life that when someone starts to try and tell me something that I can't see my applica- an application mm-hmm. for, my brain literally just goes, "I'm not having it. Not interested. Yeah. Right." And 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 it, and that's the whole reason why I failed all my A levels and didn't go to university and everything like that because beyond <laughs> GCSE right. where I could kind of yeah. go, oh, I can understand what the point of putting ten percent on something is because yeah. I'll be able to use that in daily life. Right. But when it got into A level maths and everything yeah. like that, it was just like, when am I ever? You know, it's like yeah. not interested. I, and I, I, so I, I failed everything. I've never found an application for quadratic equations yet. I learned how to do it, but I don't. Yeah. But so this is the difference. See, I would not. I didn't learn how to do it because my brain couldn't. So my, in my head, and this is this is the theory bit. I'm sort of going. Okay, if I always know that the third of a major scale relative to the root note is that one, yeah, isn't that all I need to know? It is, but where it gets... And I'm, I appreciate no, no, you no, need, no, you no, need no, to tell me no, I'm wrong, yeah, yeah. but I need no, to no, see no, no, why no, no, it is no, 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 okay. wrong. So, <laughs> no, so if you knew that all the time, that would be great. Mm. The guitar isn't quite that symmetrical, so if you were... If you're here, there's the C sharp. If you're here, there's the C sharp. If you're here, there's the C sharp. Yeah. So it's no, it, you can't say on the guitar that it's always diagonally back because we, because of the tuning of the instrument, we've got this funny B G string to B string thing. Mm-hmm. So that's the first. If you go on that one, you end up with a yeah. C natural instead of a C sharp. But I think I would. Right? I'd still know, obviously, within the scale. Okay. Once you go so, to the from the, the, yeah, the G yeah. to the B if, string, it would be a slightly if different you can do, If you can learn it that way, yeah. that's fine too. Like you, yeah. you could, you could do that. Yeah. Where it becomes, I think, a little bit more challenging is where there's potentially more changes. Mm-hmm. Or, for me, if I'm playing, let's take it back to blues because I don't mm. want to get all into weird jazzy stuff that you're probably not likely to encounter or get into. But if we if we're playing a blues in A, mm-hmm. and we know that the on the A chord we can s- target C sharp notes, mm-hmm. and on the D chord we can target F sharp notes, right. right? Because that's if I'll try and turn around so yeah, people yeah, can no, see what I'm doing. If I'm on an A7, mm-hmm. the notes that I really want to target within my minor pentatonic are this, the C sharps, all around like that. Now I know they're C sharps, but if I'm like if I said, oh, I'm only going to look at the C sharp relative to the root notes like that, then that one might not be so obvious to go. Do you see, like, that's where the really hip stuff lives. Now, most of the really good guitar players hit chord tones 
even if they don't know what it is. So Eric Clapton, B.B. King, all mm. of those guys, they mm. pick the strongest notes from the scales they're using and they they target it. I'm sure that B.B. King's not a music scholar who sat down and go, right, I'm going to target the third on this D. Listen mm. to this one. I, I don't think he did that. Yeah. But his ears have told him that it works. Yeah. And we could either spend... 40 or 50 years of our lives perfecting it by listening a lot mm -hmm. or we can learn some of the basic tricks and then learn how to implement them and i think it's a lot easier if you do it from a theory perspective that's with hang on just yeah. hang on with one second yeah so if we're playing a blues in a and we say hey on the a chord we're going to target the c sharps and then on the d chord the d7 we'll target the f sharps now this one should be easy because that's your little diagonal mm -hmm. this one it's in the same fret as the D. I'm sure you could learn that if you mm -hmm. wanted to. But being able to slide up, say, to that, to be in A minor pentatonic. And then it, the chord changes to D, and you go, well, I'm looking for an F sharp. So, oh, oh no, I'm looking for a third of the chord of, of D. D yeah. So I'd have to go, okay, well, there's the D that I know best. So I'm going to probably try and target that, even though I'm right up here. Mm. You're going to go, oh, I want the third of the chord. But I'm going to go back, yeah. I because yeah. the chances of you finding this D when you're here and going, oh, there's a D, there's another D, mm. so there's a D, there's the F sharp, is a lot less likely because when you're looking at, once you know all of the notes on the fretboard, mm. all of the notes become a little bit equal. So it's no harder to find a D note than it, rather than going, I find a D and then find another note from that, I go straight to that other note. So I can start targeting specific notes a lot so, more. So the... So the application then is more about playing over a 12 bar and understanding the notes that you can kind of target relative to the, the chord the that chord. you're playing over. So you're you're so the third in I this mean, instance. So it's a lot it, it's a lot bigger mm, as well. Mm, but an, a nice easy application that I'm hoping you'll get straight mm, away is mm. that it will help you targeting in excuse me, in every pattern of the minor pentatonic. So if you're playing here yeah. in pattern three, that one, yeah. and you go, oh, I want a C sharp in there because I'm on the A. Hey! Oh, we're so, on, we've hit the D chord. There's my F sharp. Now I'm going to bend this one a tone because that's my F sharp there. Yeah. So you can start to... Rather than being tied into a particular uh, uh, a particular shape or a particular mm. visual pattern or trying to find one note in order to try and find another note, because that's the idea of having to find a root note to then find another mm. note off of that seems a bit long-winded. Yeah, I, because it has to happen quite fluidly. Yeah. Remember, the point is that it's got to be fluid. It, you, mm. You're not. You're not doing that kung fu thing where you go like, oh, the guy's hitting me with a right punch, so I have to use my right hand. And I, yeah, yeah, it's no, too long. Yeah, it has yeah, to yeah. become like an instantaneous thing. And if you, let's what? say to know, to know the function of mm. every note of every chord is quite difficult. I think I can probably do it most of the time, but mm. if you start throwing horrible keys at me, I'm, I'm going to be like, oh, think about it for a second. But for you to learn say, blues in the key of A, E, D, and G, mm. and to absolutely know what the function of all of the notes around that you're going to want to target, the thirds, fifths, mm -hmm. sevenths, that kind of stuff, ninths, sixths, it won't be that long. You'd be able to do that by yeah. the end of next year confidently. And yeah. I, I know it's a little bit hard to see right now the difference it makes, but most of the guys that you really like and that I think when you've said to me, oh, that guy is really playing really well, and the guys yeah. that you know, like Pete or whatever, yeah. they're playing chord tones. Yeah. You know when I, you know when we were doing the rut bustery thing, and I'm saying, "Hey, I do this thing and use that arpeggio," mm. and and Pete's saying, going, "Yeah, that's the stuff I use. Like, that's I use that one. Yeah. That's a great one." Yeah. You know. Yeah. It's, I, it's, I think I'm just trying to sort of. I don't know if I, I don't know if I need to unlearn. No. Because it, it it's like if you said to me, blues, pen in A, I just know you know. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. I don't. I'm absolutely never thinking that's this particular note, or that's the third, or the fifth, or whatever. No, because you've never had to do it. I've before. never had to do it, and I'm not. And and now I'm sort of thinking. Well, if I'm playing in, you know, it, you know yeah, I, I would use that note because I know it 
fits. In all fairness, the take the interesting bit here is I've never really understood why that note works over the A part of the blues, but but not not really over the D part. Uh -huh. And it's interesting, you know, I think what I need are those little nuggets from you that just go that just said says, yeah, don't forget when you go from the A to the D that the relative third needs to change. Yes. Well, that's, so that's, that's a good example with that, with that one when you said you, you didn't know why it doesn't work over the D. Mm. Is because if you have a look at an A7 chord, I'm sorry, yeah. I'm trying to remember that they might be watching. This note here, when you go to a D7, it's back to that C sharp. So if you play this note over a D7 chord, it's just really, it's not a happy sound yeah, no, at all. No. It's not even like a cool outside blues no. sound, it's just a bit rubbish. So when you make those changes, it's not some time, it's not about, I think it's a dangerous game to get into the idea of not targeting a note. Because it's one of those things where if you think about not doing something, mm -hmm. you're actually quite likely to do it. Yeah. So you have to think about trying to do the right thing rather than trying not to do the wrong thing. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. If you start saying, I, mu I must not say the F word in certain circumstances, if you s repeat that, to you, it, you will, because you're saying that yeah, yeah. phrase over. So when, you, when you're trying to do these things, rather than thinking, okay, on the A, I, I really I can't target that one. It's too, again, it's too long-winded. You just think, oh, I'm on the D now. Here's the notes that I want yeah, to target yeah. within that pentatonic scale or that major scale. Yeah. Does that make sense? No, it, so that's... I think that's, it's, it's sort of... I, I, my, I definitely I think I need to sort of perhaps go away and process and just uh, persevere more. I'm just, I just so know we're, that we're, my learning style is... I, I, no. I find myself, I'm on your site, and I get to the end of a page and I literally go... I haven't actually read any of that, have I? I've, I've read, you know, my eyes have looked at the words and I've got okay. to get in and I'm just like, so I haven't actually taken any of that in. But. If, what would be really helpful for me, and, mm. I'm, and I suggest it to you guys out there, if any of you are doing my theory yeah. course as well, is you can email me or they can leave a comment yeah. in the thing. If you don't understand the point of it, yeah. at the bottom of the lesson, there's a comment section below. Yeah. Is you go, dude, I don't understand why I'm learning this. Tell me or I'm not going to do it. Yeah. Because the onus is on me. If I want, if I'm expecting you to put your okay. time and effort into doing something, you need to understand yeah. how it is. The only caveat with that is that sometimes the result or the answer might be, like I'm talking about target tones within the mm -hmm. pentatonic scales. If somebody's mm -hmm. not aware of chord tones, even when mm -hmm. they've learnt the major scale, that's already a difficult thing. Because at that point in the uh, the theory course, you haven't looked at a chord yet. You've yeah. only looked at the scale. So they'd be like, well, what's a chord? why chord tones? Chords come from scales? What are you talking about? You know? yeah. So sometimes it can be difficult as a teacher. A little bit, I have to go, look, I've taught this stuff loads of times. I yeah. promise you, I'd, uh, when I did music theory at school, it was sonata form. It was uh, studying counterpoint and uh, Bach chorales, so, and looking yeah. at like 10 voices of, of, and why they have to move in a certain direction and where they changed key. And it's, that stuff was really yeah. useless for me as a, a rock guitar player at that time. And luckily I had a better teacher when I got to the conservatoire who said, all that stuff you learned, just chuck that away. We don't need any of that. What we need is arpeggios, you know, and then we started again yeah. from there and it, it suddenly made sense. So okay. if there's any more stuff, if you're going through the theory course and you're just like, dude, this is just bollocks. I don't understand why it is that we're doing yeah. this. Yeah. Drop me an email. Okay. Yeah. I certainly will. There's one that you're going to have that for, which I even put in the course saying, look, this is a little bit... At, outside but i think it's really valuable and that's le learning to name intervals like to, okay. to be able to understand why you'd call the distance between two certain notes a major six or a f flat seven or an augmented whatever the, uh, the reason i teach in the theory course is because it makes you learn the notes better in the keys mm -hmm. that's why it's there mm -hmm. but it's also a useful skill for later on but everyone asks when they do that like okay man why are you making me do that yeah does that make sense of the theory? Yeah. Is there anything specific on the theory course actually before we move on where you where you were looking at and like I don't get why you want me to do this? Well, I, I think the, the the last bit that I got to was um, and I w was fundamentally being able to know what a scale was based on the number of flats and sharps that uh -huh. were in the scale, and I was sort of going, I don't, I didn't. It wasn't the question wasn't so much I don't understand why Justin wants me to mm. learn this. It was more a question of. I might, is this ever going to so be something I'm going to go, oh, that's handy, because I saw it had this yeah, many no. flats in so the scale, therefore once, it must be this. So let's say, 
when you're doing the exercises on the site and I give you all of the different keys, mm. the exercise is about learning to recognize the amount of sharps and flats and being able to relate it back to a particular key center. Mm -hmm. In the real world, when you're playing guitar in rock and pop and blues, mm -hmm. you're likely to come across E, A, D, G, C, mm -hmm. possibly B flat, but only mm -hmm. if you play like jazz or with horn players, never G flat or mm -hmm. D flat or F sharp or mm -hmm. whatever. Those keys you might encounter in a, some sort of theory context if you go down that route, but in your normal playing mm -hmm. you won't. Mm -hmm. So if we pick those five really common guitar keys, none of them are particularly hard. Mm -hmm. C has no sharps and flats, mm -hmm. G only has one sharp, D has two sharps, A has three sharps, and E has four sharps. Mm -hmm. That's not too much to remember. Mm -hmm. And there, therefore, when you start, like if you picked up some sheet music, you go, oh, I wonder what keys this John Mayer song's in, and you look at some sheet music online or whatever, and you look at it, it's got four sharps at the front, you go, oh, four sharps must be in the key of E. I can use the E major scatter solo over this. All of the chords are likely to be the chords from this key. Right. So that... that's, that's kind of the point of that. And it's yeah. less useful these days yes. where there's so much tab online which doesn't have the dots anyway yeah. when me and you were growing up the only source of like if i couldn't work out a okay. song by ear i used yeah. to go to the music store i probably couldn't afford to buy the book so i'd open it up and have a look at brown sugar and i'd go what keys are in right it's got four sharps four sharps that's a key of that's the key of okay. e. right so it must be the key know, of, okay you know. well that makes total sense. I, I think you're right in the sense of i don't think i'm not I have no aspirations to learn to sight read or to, uh -huh. to, to you know, I th I'm, I want, you know, I want to improve as a jamming mm -hmm. guitar player. So I don't know that necessarily um, that's, but it's, I get it. I but do it's sort the of understand process it. Yeah. of doing that sometimes will help you with it overall. So understanding yeah. that, that uh, I don't know, E flat has, three, I'm just thinking it's like an E flat has three sharps, three flats. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to blame that on my yeah. just saying that E flat has three sharps. I was like, can I hold this cough back? Can I hold this cough back? <laughs> uh, if, if you get into the idea of how many sharps and flats are in each of the keys, just knowing the easier ones becomes even easier if you've yeah. done that harder graft. That's yeah. why I okay. kind of teach it all right. Well, I'm just I'll, teaching E and D. I'll persevere. Well, obviously I'll but, persevere. But what's also, I'm just going to make a note of myself, um, uh, key six... Simplify. Now, what's really important and really helpful for me as well, Lee, and it's one of the things that I quite enjoy about this, mm. is because a lot of people, the comments say, I'm just like Lee, Lee's exactly that. So if you're feeling that, I can yeah. guarantee that a lot of yeah. people out there are feeling the same thing. So uh, one of the things I'd like to do is mm. to make sure that that theory course is set for you mm. to make it, it sure that it feels like this is why you should do this. Yeah, I, I, and I, I, I don't know if that's why people are relating to this, or some people are. Mm -hmm. It definitely feels a bit like the theory course is like, right, I'm assuming you've never played the guitar before. Mm -hmm. Here we go in the steps. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, uh, but I'm guessing a huge audience for people that want lessons are at a certain mm -hmm. standard already. And, and it's quite difficult, I think, to dip into to that. Not Sorry, not dip in. It's quite difficult to start at the beginning of that theory course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And feel like, okay. Um, How but, is this helping me? Yeah, or I don't know. I mean, I think also as well with theory, setting kind of like an expectation around... Um, what, yeah. why, why are you what is the point of this you know if you're if what you're sort of saying is you know fundamentally a lot of this theory is to sort of help you so that when you get a piece of sheet music you can understand and I'm sort of going I'm never going to get a piece of sheet yeah, yeah, music yeah. and look yeah, at yeah. I don't care about that and, and like you say I'm, I read tab or you know not uh -huh. read I, I, I yeah, would yeah. if I wanted to learn the notes something I would look for the tab for it I wouldn't but look where, for where the music where you will find it, it useful is things like seeing a bunch mm. of chords together so because yes. the, the, the common guitar keys are quite limited yeah. when you start to see when you look at uh, uh, I'm trying to think of a song with not a blues uh, well, you said, Tears in Heaven something yeah, like yeah, that okay. and you look at it and you go oh yeah it's got an A and it's got a a uh, 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 F sharp minor and it's mm -hmm. got an E in it. And as soon as you see those, you're going to start going, oh, we're in the key of A major, just mm -hmm. because you're used to seeing the A major and the F sharp minor mm -hmm. together on the E. And the fact that you've got that uh, as an idea means that you can solo over that yeah. thing straight away and you don't have to go through much more process than yeah. that. that. That's the bit of the theory which we covered more in Rut Busters yeah, yeah. than we have in this mm -hmm. series yet, yeah, that, that really 
I mean, I'm hoping... Some of that's coming up. So yeah. those things where we learned like the one, four, five on the yeah. neck and yeah. that stuff, yeah. that's coming up in the theory course. Yeah. So I'd kind of jumped way ahead to give you tools that were yeah. really useful straight away. Yeah, yeah. And now I'm saying, well, look, before we build on those tools too much more, yeah. let's build the foundation up underneath them a yeah. little bit to make them solid. That's kind of where Understood. I feel like it. Understood. Yes, okay. it does. Do drop me an email though if you if you like, man. I don't get this. Yeah. What are you talking about? And what I'm going to do, which hopefully will be interesting for any of you doing theory thing, I'm going to go and put a why at the top of every one of those lessons <laughs> again. This is why you should learn this because I think that's actually okay. really, really important. Okay. okay. So theory we've done. I'll just do a left handed yeah. tick there. Uh, okay. Let's talk about lick book for a second. So uh, you said. Oh, I don't have as many licks as I thought, and I ended up playing the same ones over and over. Well, because obviously I, I thought there's only any, there's no point writing the same lick over and again in like ten different keys. No, so I've just, no, yeah, I've just stuck per with, key. I've stuck key with a, a, usually. Yeah, and I've kind of gone through, and I've actually sort of gone. I don't really know that I've got that many licks. You know, it's just okay. like it's embarrassing, really. Mm. Um, Shouldn't be embarrassing, but let's figure out. So, what was the point of the lick book? Remind me again. Why did I want you to do it? Uh, well, I think it... This is a good question, actually. Um, I thought it was a, a sort of a transcribing exercise and also just an exercise in getting the, you know... F not formalising, but just going, yeah. well, what are the licks that you know? You okay, know, that's good. Like, that's, that's, they're both good reasons. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot more to the whole lick mm -hmm. book thing. So give me the first lick off that. It looks like your little slidey one. Oh, yeah, is it's, it this it's, one? Uh, uh, what have I done? I've gone seven to nine. Uh, seven to nine. So hang on a second. That must be a slide. Yeah. Oh, and I have. I've written a little S over the thing, so that's a slide. Uh, I think is it that what I've written? No, not quite. But not. That's a Why so I didn't? Yeah. Had... Okay. Probably. Yeah. Good. Okay. So let's say that's a word. Okay. Right. I'm going to play a 12-bar blues solo yeah. now in A, yeah. rhythm, mm -hmm. and you're going to play a solo with that one lick. Mm -hmm. so, Just okay. that lick. Yeah? Okay. Ready? Two, yeah. three, four. Rehash the same lick in three or four different times, and but it sounds cool. Sounds all right, it's isn't like it? It, you're, you're a bit boring, but potentially a bit boring because you wouldn't normally use one lick for no. the whole thing. Mm -hmm. But one thing that you're potentially guilty of sometimes is playing a lick and then playing another lick and then playing another lick without repeating enough mm -hmm. to make it feel like you're saying something with the phrase. Yeah. Now, as soon as you started doing that and I forced you onto the one lick, you automatically did a couple of things that I would have asked you to do had you mm -hmm. not have done it. One was repeating little bits of it. Mm -hmm. So there was quite a few, you went... Mm -hmm. I mean, when you listen to great guitar players now, mm -hmm. and in fact, one of the... Actually, I'm going to put on the list is a listen. Uh, when you listen to great guitar players this week, because mm -hmm. I'm going to set you a listening <laughs> exercise, I want you to pay attention to how they're playing, what mm -hmm. licks, mm -hmm. when, how often they repeat licks, do they repeat licks, uh, what what ways do they change the licks when they're playing, and how, do, how does that mm -hmm. kind of work, mm -hmm. right? Because people don't generally play the same lick over and over and over again. Yeah. But they very often have licks that are similar, or one lick that mm -hmm. changes and morphs around a little yeah. bit. And it does make musical sense. Like what you mm. just played there, if that was the first round of a solo, if we were having a jam at a yeah. club or whatever, that's cool. Yeah. And no problem. It was nice. You had nice phrasing. You, mm. the, the, the rhythm of it was nice. It was like, yeah, well, I'm, yeah, I'm feeling that. Much more than if you just played like a whole bunch of different licks one after the other. Yeah. Sorry. That's right. Um, I, and I, I, funnily enough, I, I actually would concur, massively concur, that I know if I find a lick, and it's a nice. It fits with the with the the, the, the vibe of the song yeah. that's being played. Actually, finding um, I'm just trying to think of almost like the the, the solo kind of vibe from something like Purple Rain. Uh -huh. You know, it is. You know, 
and it's because almost you just go well it's so beautiful and it's so perfect for that and it's almost like being sung or mm -hmm. rather than played yeah. if he'd have played dun 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 and then something different it was like where's the beauty Absolutely. in that kind of phrase so I, I agree I totally agree and I, and I totally agree that like, I need to consciously go find the musicality within it Perfect. stick with that so, look, rather than just play something different from a scale and, and a really good way of doing that is to practice doing what we're doing because remember the thing when you're really playing right as opposed mm -hmm. to practicing mm -hmm. when you're playing for mm -hmm. real you don't want to think about it you don't want to think about mm -hmm. trying to play this extra lick or trying to use this scale yeah. or this arpeggio when you're practicing mm -hmm. you want to be repeating the things that you want to do when you play yeah. over and over again so yeah. that they tend to happen naturally because probably in the real world you would never still play that one lick mm -hmm. over and over again for the whole thing but you might play if you've practiced doing that same lick over and over and over again then you might find yeah. that you play it a little bit more in the real world i and i funnily enough i think sometimes that the, the the, the number of different licks that get thrown is almost me just trying to find uh -huh. the one. That's not an but, invalid idea I mean, either. Well, no, but then, well, then what happens is by the time you've actually found the one, it's like it's the end it's of the, the end of your turn. My turn, yeah. And so you just sort of go. So I do, I do agree. No, I totally. I, I, but you'll find you have more starting points. Yeah. So I have, I have definite things, starting ideas mm. that I have when I'm. Uh, they're almost like a backup because sometimes I have this musical memory musical mind whatever that little part that can kind of hear an idea mm. almost mm. in there somewhere and then i'm trying to find make my fingers make that sound yeah but i have backups because that doesn't happen all the time so i have like little licks that i know this is a nice starting point yeah and that it'll kind of morph its way into something that'll fit the song yeah. i hope sometimes yeah. it doesn't always yeah, yeah. work right yeah. so the more practice you do on this mm -hmm. the better so that's thing one is practicing rep uh, repeating the licks that you mm -hmm. know already second reason that why having a lick book is really good is l exploring the ones that you've got beyond your normal comfort yeah. zones yeah. so that lick what else could we do with that idea so we've we've played a note we slid up a note played another note went back to the one we did slid back and then went down to a down the scale a little bit. Mm -hmm. How else could we try and apply that lick, that the, the concept of the lick? What could we extract from that and put somewhere else? Uh, I'm not sure I understand the, the, the okay. question. Okay, so right, but... there's, uh, if we look at it from a technical point of view to mm -hmm. start off with, slide, play a note on the next string, yeah. go back to the note that was on the previous string, slide back again. If we took that pattern, we could do it, say, somewhere here. That's the same. Yeah, I see what you mean. I'm just nicking that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. Or here. That's yeah. almost certainly the same pattern. Yeah. So, part, again, another step out of the box for you mm. would be Okay, let's put a back and track on. Let's spend the first minute yeah, or so yeah. just playing around with this lick. How many different ways can I play it? Can I use different fingers? Where does it work on the yeah. neck? Can it, does it move with the different chords? Yeah. Then how else might I be able to use this yeah. lick that's a little bit different? Yeah. I mean, you know, de definitely... Either the, either the, the physicalness of it, yeah? I, I, for me, again, I love... It's just something that is my... my I don't character, know. yeah, well, yeah, probably just, character. Yeah. I just love all those. Yeah, yeah right. Anyway. See, that's kind of the same like this. Yeah, that's a lovely, I just, lovely I just, little. I just, I just, oh, oh, what? I just like that. Um, yeah, some people do. You know, I think I would go for the slide over the bend, just because uh -huh. it's. And I agree, it, it's worth me trying to, to sort of just go. Well, if that's sort of my one of like my Your thing, you know, just exactly, just, just try and it. find other ways of using something that's already really natural to you, but yeah, try and yeah. find another context for it. I, I I haven't done this, but doing it, I'm like, mm. yeah, that's actually pretty cool. That's a really interesting mm. little. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. 
Yeah, anyway. Now, I'm not saying I that agree. you should do it. I'm not tr saying, hey, it has to be a new lick, but people often say about this, like when you're learning a lick, oh, you're nicking everyone else's licks. Well, where do you get your own voice? Well, this is part of it, is finding the licks that you use all the time, mm -hmm. what feels natural under your fingers, how yeah. are you playing it, and then taking a little bit of time to go, well, how else could I do that? Because you'll find there's all sorts of other little mm. things under your fingers that work really well. Yeah. And rather than me trying to go, here, you've got to use this funny finger and learn this mm. difficult lick that feels natural and doesn't feel kind of comfy for Should you. I, can, if can, we take the ones that mm. you like and change them up a little bit, you've suddenly increased your vocabulary big time. Yes. Is Sorry. it worth me also... Am I also... Could I, should I sort of combine that with the... The sort of this idea of sort of targeting the third of the so you know I'm just conscious that there's no there's no, no third that's a, in that's there. a pentatonic lick yeah so it doesn't have a third but you could go or, that's yeah so I I you would could. do that in the sense of sorry I do have some of those licks that will have that third in there but I'm not conscious that it's the third now you and are I'm also not conscious that it becomes in a pro the third moves as the chord depending on the chord that's what we're going to be working on in the future with yeah. this making changes because it's yeah we're, we're getting there we're, I'm, I'm yeah, trying yeah, yeah. to introduce okay. this okay. stuff a little bit slowly I should kind of point out a couple of the guys on in, in the comments of last week uh, talked about how that I was laying it on you a little bit heavy and saying like hey man you're giving him a bit much stuff so uh, just so you're aware I'm still testing you as a student a little yeah, bit yeah. to find out because what I want to do is give you enough stuff to really keep you absorbed mm -hmm. and interested mm -hmm. possibly just a tiny bit too much <laughs> but not leaving it un underfilled sometimes I will so yeah. sometimes if, if I'm seeing you as a student like okay I can see he's really struggling with that he needs more mm. stuff I'm gonna mm. cut down on what I give you all the time so I'm still I'm still learning a bit about you about yeah. what you like and what you the way you absorb yep. stuff so uh, don't, if, if, it, if it ever feels like completely overwhelming yeah. and I haven't seemed to have noticed yeah no worry you about know I'm, and again as a student and funny enough I, I got described by equally a couple of people as like the world's worst guitar student because I'm my attention straight <laughs> hopefully you now if I can see the application for yeah, it, yeah. I, I'll put well, we'll go well over and above no, what's expected. But if I can't see the application yep. for it, I just and it's it's I don't have that. My DNA makeup just isn't. I just won't oh, do yeah. it. You know, it's like so. I get it. Or or at least if I am doing it, it feels so laboured and so like oh my god, yeah, not yeah. again. You know, but I'm going to yeah. try and make sure that you've got enough of the understanding stuff each step of the way, right? Okay, so. Uh, that's Lickbook. So, take, uh, you've got backing tracks. I know Pete makes yes, some great backing he tracks. He does. We so should plug we should those definitely, I'll give those a little. I also right. have my own backing oh, track yes, series as well. <laughs> but uh, Pete has Pete on Honore. Are they yes. always not Honore or Honore? Oh, I suppose you'd have to be Danish to know exactly, but it's Honore. Honore. Okay, it's, sorry, Pete. For, uh, uh, it, although, yeah, of course, anyway. if you ask Siri to phone Peter Honore, it yeah, absolutely phones someone know. else yeah, in my yeah. contact book. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's Peter Honore. Honore. Honor, it gets yeah. Yeah, or, but it it's gets it. Anyway, okay. Uh, so use the backing tracks. Practice the lick. Continue to fill out the lick book yeah, with yeah, more yeah. licks yeah. that you recognise that you can do. Yeah. I'm gonna because I've got a few other things that I want to do today, but we're yeah. gonna revisit this lick book again. Sure. And I'll actually we're gonna try and do a little bit more jamming where I just pick one of the licks and go. Okay, here's a lick. Perfect. If you get any licks that you don't understand where the notes come from, mm -hmm. put a little star next to them to make sure we discuss them. If you're like, well, I've got this lick that goes... And you're like, I don't understand what those... those none of them are pentatonic, yeah. what's happened? Yeah. Then put a little star so we can start to oh, do a little bit of the... I can't well. even really play this one. This is totally stolen from... I can't remember who said, but you... Know. So yeah. that's got that's got that one, that one, and that one in it. Yep. And Stevie Ray Vaughan is the classic. Yeah, uh, but he, he uh, uses it. Um, yeah, I just know that it's a cool sounding lick, but whether it's we'll, we'll come. We're we'll, not going to do it today, but it, yeah, put on if it's on your list it's already. A, it's the one that's literally like I've no idea if I've transcribed this properly. Yeah, yeah. But it's like about a mile long. But that's that's that one, dude. I think that's good. Okay, lick book is sorted. So transcribing. Yes. You, well, we, how far did you get? So you, the, the, the thing to do was to well, learn... Well, I, I sort of badly transcribed that Albert yep. King track. Yep. And then you said, next time you're I want here, you to learn, it. Uh, learn it. And I'll be honest with you, I probably haven't put the hours in to do this one or the effort in to do this one. So I've got... I, I, I know the first 
like, like seven or eight bars of, of the tune and I, and I sort of know the ending and okay. the bit so in what was the game. reason why I wanted you to learn it well I, I think that's the most practical application of all the of everything isn't it yep. just learn the solo yeah but uh, so why what, why, do, why would you want to learn that solo or any other solo um, well, I suppose if I wanted to be able to play something verbatim as it was played yeah, by the okay. original artist, that's so what you've that's got to learn to reason. do. That's one reason. What else? Yeah. That's like the um, smallest reason. Oh, really? Okay. And I suppose to, to learn the licks that that artist is playing and try and add them yeah. to my own repertoire. Okay. That's, that's a big part. Mm. So when you're learning a solo by someone else, it's not so much about learning to play that solo. Because if mm -hmm. I go to... And so I'm going to see uh, uh, the the Dave Kilmins to play the wall or whatever. In yeah. which case, I do want to hear all yeah. of the, the you know the original solos. Most times, I don't want to hear the same a covers band play exactly the same. So mm -hmm. I want to hear them be creative with stuff. Mm -hmm. So the point usually when you're learning a solo is to look at what's being played, analyze it, find the bits that you really like. Okay. And then practice those bits that you really like and incorporate mm -hmm. them into your own playing. It shouldn't be that you try and use every lick from every solo because that's too much, mm -hmm. there's too much stuff there. So when you're learning that solo, I want you to go through and find the sections or the parts that you really resonate with. Mm -hmm. And if there's none of them, then mm -hmm. we just have to do a different solo. But I mean, that's, that particular solo has so many little yeah. things about it that I think are worth exploring yeah. and, and kind of interesting. Um, that's why I picked that one for you. A lot. I know you're a fan of clappers and all of that as well. And a lot of those are also Eric Clapton mm -hmm. kind of style licks. So what's the, the first lick? Do you remember the first lick? Uh, it's just a... Good, okay. Nice for Brad Lee as well, I'm making note of that. And also you got the bending nice. You got yeah. a nice little curl on the mm -hmm. third. So when you're transcribing and you're learning the solo, and you're trying to copy it as close to the original one as you can, you're not just learning the licks, but you're learning the dynamics, you're learning the how much to bend the note exactly, uh, how, whether the notes are played hard or, or, or soft, whether they're played uh, kind of not just hard or soft, but the, you can yeah, suck out yeah. the, the, the whole expression of the lick if you, yeah. pra if you try and really practice it. You get all of these subtle things that are not stuff that can be written down. Yes. It's impossible to write it down, yes. but by yeah, practicing yeah. it over and over. Now, all of those subtle things are things that you can then use in your own improvisations, but they're also things that you can use on a particular lick. So that lick here. Yeah. Okay. All of that could be a couple of licks. This, that is a lick on its own, and mm -hmm. that's one that almost everybody uses. Yeah. They quite often use it here as well. Yeah. That lick is more commonly played here. doesn't matter yeah. and you want to know because there's no indicator when you're transcribing as to yeah. where it's played other than just experience so let's take that first lick the very first one yeah is this on youtube by the way no that albert king because no. fine i still haven't tried i still haven't worked out how to get the track to play on my iphone so i'm only ever able to play it on my desktop at work but anyway uh how to get the track on your iphone you'd have to go to Put it into your iTunes library. Yeah, I don't think it. Could. And then sync it. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, you're probably. Or I could e or I could text it to you. And we'll then you we'll can try save it to we'll drive. just try and do it. Okay. After. Yeah. So, so first lick. Well, uh, Excellent. Keep going. delivery do it again okay so I'm gonna play just the riff I want you to play just that lick and explore playing that one lick in a few different ways like we were doing for the lick foot stuff yeah you've got a question right. though haven't you well no yeah. it, it was just literally so I, I obviously transcribed this as here yeah but you were saying it's uh, potentially 13 well we're no, we can't be do boo, third finger, third finger, third finger, bend. Oh, okay. oh. That's it. Now, okay, so it's a lot harder. What, no, it is a lot harder. 
So, what do you know about Albert King? Uh, next to nothing. Okay, uh, he plays upside down. So the okay. thin string is on the top. Most of his big bending stuff is on the thin string and he pulls it down and he right. can get insane big bends. Right. So when you're trying to replicate his style, yeah. it tends to be the big bends are on the thinner strings and, it, and, and they can be quite wide and quite heavy. So that's one of those, right. when I said it's more likely to, to be here, that would be the reason. Right. right, okay, fine. And that's one of those like, you only get that when you've studied a bit beyond like just learnt one solo when you've really tried to give it a bit more research as, yeah. as i said the more you get into this the more detective -y you'll become and you'll start be wondering about which finger would they have used for this how do they you know i have to do it because if i do it the wrong way the internet reminds me very quickly that i've you know i've done something wrong but uh you know even for my own personal development i was yeah. always a bit of a geek to try and figure out you know okay. what string was it on what finger mm -hmm. might they have used that kind of thing yeah yeah uh okay let's have a go just just that for the, okay. the very first And as many different variations as you can on that. Okay. Yeah. Well, how, how, how would I, when you say vary, mm. how can you vary it? Like when we did the lick book, and I said, okay, what oh, okay. else can you do? To um, it? Okay. Fine. Yeah. Yep. See if you can potentially mix it in with something that you know already. So maybe you go, and then what lick do you know around here? So we're what actually, lick, what in lick, fairness, what I, lick do you know so you're, in that area? But you're playing, effectively, if I'm playing it here, I'm playing position four of the pentatonic three. scale, aren't I? Three. three. <laughs> that's three. So yeah. I, thought, I always thought that... Well, that's four. That's four. I thought, why did I that's think that was five, then? <laughs> five is this one. Of course. Right. Semantics, I, yes. I know, but, but yes, I'm playing it in the position below what I would normally play. It, um. Okay, remind me next week if I forget to look at this piece of paper that we need to do the pentatonic pattern revision next week. Yeah, I because I <coughs> whatever, like you say, okay. let's keep it for next week. All let's, right, let's uh, just have a quick jam on that link. Yeah. Three, four. <laughs> But there we go. Okay, <laughs> I know you were using the lick really well musically. Yeah, yeah. You explored some other things. This is practice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You it's really important that you don't confuse practice with playing because okay. when you're practicing something and when you're learning something, yeah. you're supposed to fuck it up. Okay. If you're not fucking, it, sorry, try not <laughs> messing it up. Yes. If you're not messing it up, then you're not pushing yourself hard enough. Yeah. So. It's fine for things to be not quite going right because you try. I mean, when I say that, I, I need to kind of rewind before the internet jumps on me. You should always aim to practice things perfectly, like scales and things, yeah, so that you yeah. get it exactly right. But definitely with exploratory things, where you take your lick and trying out different things and trying to do it this way, trying to do it another way, yeah. then the idea should be that you fall off the skateboard sometimes because you try out a new yeah. thing. Okay. Make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. that's your what you're going to be doing for transcribe, what you've done for transcribing. Yeah. This week, you're going to do uh, transcribe five Eric Clapton licks that you really like. Okay. So I want you to listen through, and mm -hmm. this is this is going to tie in here now. I'm going to specifically make it Eric Clapton. Do you like the Beano album? Can I just do all the ones off Layla? Um, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's all, it's all do, cool. do you, do, are you familiar with the Beano album? Um, I couldn't tell John you what Mayer, songs, John Mayer, yeah, the, the, the older the, the, stuff, the yeah. first one. Mm -hmm. Are you familiar with it? Well, I've, I've got it, so I'll know it, but I can't tell you what songs are on it particularly. Okay. So, so uh, I think that there's a hell of a lot of good things in that mm -hmm. record. If mm -hmm. you like Eric Clapton, if you scope out what's going on on that record, yep. it informs almost everything that he does later. Okay. So it's a really, so really five, valuable five licks thing. From Bino. I can do so, that. 
what I want you to do, there's two parts of this. First of all is listen. I want you to find mm -hmm. at least once a week, mm -hmm. a half an hour, mm -hmm. where you can sit down and do nothing but listen, mm -hmm. with no distractions at all, no phone, nothing, headphones on, mm -hmm. and you're going to sit and listen for half an hour to some, to the, this week, it's going to okay. be better. See if you can do it just once a week. Mm -hmm. um, I try and do it almost every day. Yeah. At least 15 minutes to half an hour. I aim okay. for half an hour. Uh, it used to be an hour, but I just get busy in Brazil. But there is so much good stuff about yeah. just listening because we yeah, don't sure. do it anymore. No, like I agree. When I was a kid, I used to listen for hours and hours to Floyd Records sitting yeah. there with the speakers around my head and just yeah. going, wow, it's yeah. amazing. We just forget to do that yes, a lot. So I agree. You're going to listen. What mm -hmm. I'd like you to do is listen, have a little notepad next to you, mm -hmm. and if you hear a lick that's like, wow, this is outstanding, have a quick look and go, oh, it was track five at roughly three minutes or whatever, okay. and just write it down. Mm -hmm. Then I want you to go back and I want you to try and transcribe those ones. Okay. So be aware when you're deciding which ones to do that if it goes it's going to probably be quite a lot harder yeah. than another one. And that's not to, I'm not trying to put you off from no, having to go on a hard one. There shouldn't but be just don't, those don't go I like, know. I'm going to pick... <laughs> you'd be surprised. There's, really? some, there's some tricky stuff. He's, okay, he does some I'll tricky avoid things. the tricky stuff. Um, so yeah, transcribing is Eric Clapton, but mm -hmm. combining that with listening. So mm -hmm. five, um, five licks. Now, uh, we've got the scale work, and we've done notes on the neck as well. We've talked about the Max Chill Out stuff. I'm going to add that's for me. Okay, scale work. Mm -hmm. uh, pattern two, major scale. Just give me a look at it play it up and down, please. Oh, uh, man. Again. Edit this oh, bit No. That's what, it, that's what it's normally like. I don't know why I can't. Dude, it's, uh, I've it's told you, it it's normal to find it weird in front of teachers. Yeah. I still do it if I play in front of people, whatever yeah. that may be. It's just normal. Uh, that's gone really well. Yeah, so that, the, the bit that you said last time is trying to do it as, uh, as hammer ons and pull offs, which, yeah. is, which is not so bad going up, but good. Okay. That's not too bad. Let's but go. coming down, it. The, the trick for doing that right is just to do it slower. Yeah. Yeah. But where are you, and you're picking on the. Yeah. You pick when you go to it. You pick when you go to a new string. Pick, flick, flick. It is. Look, if you, in the real world, sometimes you're going to go just crazy and not have to uh, like. And not you don't have to. You don't have to pick it. But yeah. At this point, I want you going pick, flick, flick. This slowly or slower to develop the control of those fingers because what you're struggling with at the moment is the control and I can see it because when you go here this finger's kind of like not sure it wants to be down it needs to be fully down before that flick happens so put it down the other two are prepped up flick flick it is harder Every, everybody including me struggles a lot more with the flick offs mm. the other the other thing is I don't know if it's a muscle memory thing or whatever but just on the way down, so that sort of yeah. this this finger is yeah. so desperate to play that note. Yeah, you just have to tell it. But it's to. just yeah, and it's just yeah. like why? And it's just I don't, I, I don't know. I've I've seen people have the same struggle. It wasn't one of the struggles that I had. That's it. Okay, turn your volume up. Move the scale shape back to fr frets. That's it. That's now G major. I'm going to play a blues in A, you're going to mm -hmm. play the G major scale. Mm -hmm. uh, just play it straight up and down for now. Sorry, doggy. It's not that bad, is it, Ziggy? <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Whatever in my head, I'm going. It sounds like crap. The tempo doesn't sound right, but I can't. I can't pick up. Yeah. What tempo so to play it in? At the moment, you've only played the scale mm -hmm. straight. Yes. So one and two and three and four yeah. and 
And now I'm actually going to go one, and two, and three, and four, with a shuffle to match the shuffle. Okay. Yeah. Which feels completely different. It's a really, really common mistake that people make, particularly blues players, when they start learning technical stuff like scales. They practice the scales all straight, and they never, are, are never ever able to use them in the real world because they're playing it with a different feel. Right? That's thing number one. Thing number two, you're starting on this note. And where we start has a lot of weight in our yeah, ears. Yeah. So I want you to play the same scale, but I want you to start on that note start with your second finger. Okay, okay so yeah, start yeah. on the A, yeah. and then just see if you can sync along with me and feel it's okay. going. I know you've got a good shuffle in you. I've, yeah, heard, no, you, I've heard you used it, you know. Here <laughs> it's we go. the most inappropriate thing you've ever said. What? <laughs> you've got a good shuffle in you. <laughs> oh dear. There we go. You can watch Lee do his shuffle. Yeah, okay. In, in the, uh, uh, let's try again. Lee's privates. Here we go. <laughs> oh. Much better. Funky on the oh end. God. No, no, I right. loved it. So yeah, the, the, uh, that funnily enough is I think that style of that's so like ingrained in everything I've ever played, and it does surprise me sometimes because I'll meet a lot of unbelievably talented, technically good guitar players. Just can't but just can you, can't you just go and then it's like no, no. I know <laughs> it's I I never I can't really work with people who can't shuffle I find it really just it's like for me it's a fundamental thing that makes music oh, if good you're, if you're not into no, no I, that's, that's, that's not a criticism of those mm. people who can't it's just I mm. it's all of the music that I love yes. has that has feeling a, has, yeah. and the stuff there's a couple of examples of stuff that's really straight but yeah very very few of okay so if I so I will so practice that scale you can practice sort of shuffle, shuffle kind of now, thing yeah let's do the same thing again mm -hmm. in thirds Oh, using that pattern as well. I should I should say I haven't No, you haven't. No, I mean I've done oh, I know I can yeah. do it, but I've done that one, but I've not even Oh signed. you haven't done it on that one on the on the three inch string scale. No. Right? Okay. And then I'll let you off. I think we did do that last time, but that's it. working out as I go along, okay. so I haven't. Siggy, Siggy that's mate. a metal cage. Don't you don't want to try to eat that. Yeah, sorry doggy. Um, um, okay, let's just let's do this Justin's, a little bit. Uh, eldest child we're just talking to in a yeah. cage down here. In cage. <laughs> don't be naughty around my house. You end up getting locked in an aluminium cage, don't you? <laughs> Poor Ziggs. If we did yeah. do that last time, I apologise because I no, haven't no, practiced right. it at all. Let's just do this part. That's it. Okay. Yeah, you can actually do that. It sounds really cool. <laughs> that's it. Just it's enough. That's too much. Here we go. Just so that first part. Just the, just the oh, thinnest right. couple of strings. Okay. I just want you to experiment with it. Here we go. I've suddenly put it in a new context yeah. where it's like, oh, hang on, I, I've got all my funky stuff going on now, that's it. Now what you were doing there was playing over a D chord, which is this idea of using the D mixolydian mode, right? Oh which, no, here we go, I no. knew it, sooner or later you'd get onto rabbit diseases. Yeah, yeah exactly, the, 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 the rabbit diseases are really cool actually, yeah. and we are going to go there, okay. right? But um, 
not today. I just okay. wanted to give you an idea. Yeah. I wanted to, one, explain the shuffle thing so that you don't spend far too much time practicing it straight and never think of it as being a shuffle and then wonder why the two don't relate to each other very well. So stay aware of that. I'm going to practice that third thing like crazy. That's awesome. Yeah. Now, you use it, you've suddenly gone to these fingers, yeah, Lee, so and what's going to happen? No, 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 that, no. Okay, it's not bad at all. Why isn't it bad? I mean, it's... It's just why is how it, I would normally why play. Why might it be better to do that? Why might it be better to do mm. that? I, don't, I mean, it certainly feels more natural to me just because okay. of how I so always play. If if we practice it do like you know, this... I, I don't know if anyone... So, if you practice this... And then you're playing this... Do you think that this is naturally going to happen? No. No. So, when you're practicing... One of the things that you're going to find is you want to, whenever you're learning a new phrase or a new mm -hmm. idea, think of it in the context of the stuff that you know and how you play. So, as an exercise, this is really good. Mm -hmm. But if you're going to come to actually play it, then this. That's okay now, is it? Okay. Now, here's, look what I did. So instead of this note's not even in the scale, it's the blue scale. Look, yeah. that's good on those two strings. This one's the blue scale. Yeah. So I took the same idea. And suddenly yeah. you've got some pretty funky cool yeah, stuff going on. Yeah, that sounds cool. So what I want you to, one of the things that we want to start doing is with things like the thirds and later on when we start doing fourths and fifths, other uh, pattern ideas, is being able to apply them onto the guitar straight away. Okay. Yeah. So mm -hmm. have a go at using the thirds in the three note string pattern in using the G major scale mm -hmm. but playing it over an A blues. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Think about starting on the A just so you don't train your ears up to be hearing the G. So yeah, start on that. Or start on a different A. You could start there. Okay. Yeah? Third finger. What finger? Look. Little finger, little finger, little finger, little finger. Little finger work. Oh, sorry. Let me explain. I'll, I'll do this to camera as well. Though. This is a, if you're doing the whole thing. Yeah. You'd start little. If you're going to start on that root note, you'd go little finger, second finger, first finger, little finger, first finger, lay it down, third finger, lay it down, lay it down, third finger, what? lay it down. That's it. Okay, so I see it. Is it, is it? What? First finger. Right. First, fourth, first, 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 first. Because you want me to slide up you, like Yeah, because you've got to slide, change position, yeah. So. First, lay it down. Third, lay it down. First, little finger. That's it. Good. Good. So, oh. if you do that, and you practice it, you're starting there with your little finger on that note. Mm -hmm. If you're playing a blues in A, are you likely to play that note with that finger? No. What are you likely to play that note with? My third finger. With your third finger. So how about we go... And we use third finger, first finger, and then slide your first finger back. That's it. Now, that lick, that's it. Yes, 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 good. So that. Ah, oh, nice. So there's it. Wish you were video on this, I could watch it, but oh, you are. <laughs> do you see what I mean? Yeah, so I do. Instead of it then being. Because what we have to remember with all of these kind of things, the, the conceptual stuff, is that if it stays as conceptual stuff that's separated by fingering or by thinking or whatever from the stuff that you already play, mm -hmm. you're always going to be at a point where you go, oh, I'm going to use that third slick now, so I'm going to start with that finger, and it'll become, it'll feel detached. Does that make sense? Yes, it does make sense. And does that mean, yeah, it's okay, so I've, again, I've got to kind of separate 
the got scales to separate from the practice plane. Practice and plane. Yeah, exactly. Or the so practice of scales. Practicing a scale up and down is good for technical dexterity exercises. Right. Yeah. But when you've got something like thirds, which is not only a good dexterity mm. exercise, but is actually a really nice melodic yeah. idea. It's sort of fundamental. You need to look yeah. at it and go, well, how might I actually use this in the real world? Yeah. What fingering might I use? Does that make sense? Yes. It does. Well, there's a lot of stuff. There's a long lesson. There's a lot, lesson, there's a lot to take in this one. But yeah. uh, yes, I, I, I agree. We have done a lot I of think. stuff. <laughs> yeah. It, it, what do we mean? Hey, Rocket. Ah, hour and ten. Actually, yeah. yeah. So a bit longer than usual. Um, okay. I'm not going to bum you out with any more. How's okay. that? Perfect. Yeah? Yes. Okay. Perfect. Yes. Mate. Fist pump. Bosh. So I don't give you my horrible cold. Yes. Well, I hope oh, you get I can't better. I'm sorry I've been so sparse on lessons lately. I've this just is really such a nice guitar. As you've probably oh, noticed, I didn't bring one of my own. I've yeah. uh, borrowed Justin's 1966 Telecaster. Yeah. Oh, it's great. She's a lovely old girl, that one. Mm. Right, awesome. <laughs> okay, have a nice week, everyone. Oh.